Today I'm covering NVIDIA's AI Workbench and it's going to be geared more towards developers who want a solution to where you can work on a laptop but then scale it to a GPU server. I'm going to go through how you might use it, how you might download it and install. And so let's just go ahead and jump into it. Now for some prerequisites, if you want to do NVIDIA acceleration, you're going to need an NVIDIA graphics card. However, this can run on Mac as well. You don't need an NVIDIA graphics card for Mac. And then if you just want to do things on the CPU, um, you could do that too. And then I recommend that you have a GitHub account and then a Docker account. But if you don't have any of those, I will show you how you can set those up. Um, or just make an account for those. And before we get started, it is recommended that you update your NVIDIA drivers. So if you navigate and look up for NVIDIA drivers, it'll bring you to this page where you can look up your um, graphics card. In this case, let's say I've got a 4090. I'm going to use GeForce uh, 40 series, and then I'm going to select the 4090 uh, graphics card right here, Windows 11 English Find. And then that's going to get us the driver that we're going to need to install for our system. And then that'll bring us here. And then I'm just going to select the studio driver view here and then just click on download. So um, download this to an area that you know and then just run through the installation instructions and then get your drivers updated and then you should be good there. So to download it, we'll go to the Workbench page right here and this is free for everyone to download and try out. So I already have it in my downloads, but it's about 100 megabytes large and I'm going to now navigate into the downloads folder and we're going to run that. So this is a pretty hands off installation. If you don't have any of the stuff installed that you need, which are Docker and WSL2, it'll handle all of that for you. So no need to worry. There are a little bit of quirks if you're installing from scratch, though, but I'll go over those. So begin installation and we're going to wait for it to finish up with this WSL2 distribution installation. All right. And once it gets WSL2 all up and set up, we're going to do Docker desktop for the um, the containerization handling of it. Now click install and we'll wait for that to finish up. And so we're going to be met with this page right here. Um, at the end of it, we're going to get an error, but I'll show you how you can resolve that if this is your first time installation. And then for the Docker setup, you'll get a window that'll pop up. Just click continue with it and then it'll start installing Docker. All right. So I actually ended up getting this um, pop up right here instead of an error with Docker install complete. Um, so just with this one, I'm just going to click on restart the WSL integration and it should be fine. And then I should be able to click next. However, if you do run into an issue where it's Docker install incomplete, if you get an error at this last step, what you're going to have to do is restart the computer and then you need to just set up Docker desktop. And so let's assume that you did restart your computer and that you're at your home screen again. All you need to do is just go into Docker desktop by double clicking the app on the desktop. And then we'll have to log in here. Um, I'm actually going to use my GitHub account. So I'm going to click this little cat icon and it's going to bring me to the, um, the home page. And since I'm already logged in um, with GitHub, um, I can just open up the Docker exe. And, and so log in with your GitHub account and then just open the Docker desktop exe. And then it'll open up like this. So you no longer need this. So you can actually just close out of that. And one quick thing while I'm here, I might as well show you how you can sign up for GitHub. So you head over to the GitHub page, you go to sign up and then just go through the process here. So enter whatever email that you want to do. Let's do Jared Micah email. I already have one associated with it. So you just go through the process for setting it up, confirm it via email, get authenticator set up, and you should be good to go here. And and then so we can close out of that Docker window and continue along with the NVIDIA um, AI Workbench install. So next here. And then now we're going to log into Git for the AI Workbench so that we can do a uh, push pools and cloning for from our GitHub repository. So next for GitHub. And then with that GitHub account that was just created, we are going to uh, continue signing in here. And once you get all of the GitHub login stuff here, you'll be um, met with congratulations, you're all set. And then you can close this window. Cool. So all of that is set up. Your Docker is set up. GitHub is set up and we are ready to get started. And a lot of this demonstration is actually being done on this Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 7, which is a perfect balance between portability and power, especially for my use case. So I worked with Lenovo and Nvidia to get me a machine that is able to keep up with my workflow. And for me, a device like this works pretty great. So I got mine configured with the RTX 3000 ADA generation, which is just enough for me to prototype many of the projects that I work on and includes 64 gigabytes of RAM so my system doesn't get bogged down as well as good enough battery so I don't always need it plugged in and will last me pretty much 
all I need when I'm working. Now, admittedly, it's not the best for large fine tuning or training, but if I need to run inference on any of these text to speech softwares that I use locally, it is more than capable of being able to do that. Even though it's a laptop, I can still run quick tests some of the text to speech models I use, including Tortoise, and this is ran all locally. And a link to this direct configuration will be listed in the description down below. So please go check that out if you are interested in a configuration such as this. I'm going to show just how you can do this locally. And um, yeah, we'll click on local and it's going to give us two options here. So start a new project or clone a project. So what I'm going to show is how you can start a new project, how you can push it to GitHub and then how you can clone that on another computer to, let's say, continue working somewhere else. So let's go with new project and I'm going to name this AI um, workbench example, example for YouTube video. And then I'm going to click next. And then I'm going to set a base container that has already been packaged and containerized by NVIDIA um, to use for whatever project I want to work on. And so you can actually make custom containers, but this does require that you have um, additional access from NVIDIA. So that's if you're working with NVIDIA, probably on an enterprise level. Uh, but for this case, we can just use what's inside of their NGC catalog already. And I'm, I'm going to use this PyTorch 2.1 base with CUDA 12.2. So I'm going to go into that, then create. And you will now see that we have this screen here. Let me go ahead and do full screen. In this bottom tab here, you'll see that it's starting to build and it's just getting everything set up you need for this uh, container. Let's take a quick browse around. So you've got your file explorer here. So this is kind of like a GitHub page right here, this, this front one that you're met with, uh, which is the file browser on this left tab here. And then we've got environment and this is how we can set up different packages and different additional developer things that we might need. So things like scripts to modify the containers, any types of variables that you might need, any secrets like API keys that you also might need, and then additional uh, configurable stuff that you can do. Now, while it's building, um, I'm actually going to add an application here um, because I want to use VS code. And so I'm going to click that add button down in this apps area, and then I'm going to add Visual Studio Code. Alrighty, so after a while of uh, building, it will have completed and we can start and um, working through some things. So let's go and launch Visual Studio Code. So, all right, so the build is ready. And um, if you want to use VS Code, you actually need VS Code installed on your computer. So if you don't have VS Code installed, I'll show you how you can do that real quick. And then you might see I have F5 TTS, so I'm actually going to show how you can clone that to the um, NVIDIA container. And so uh, once you have VS Code installed on your computer, we can now use this and we'll launch Visual Studio Code. That's going to start the project container and then it's going to open up an instance of VS Code. So while it's doing that and launching up, um, I'm going to navigate to a GitHub repository that let's say I want to do um, some work on and I want to take some code from. Um, I'm going to clone this repository to the container. Now we've got VS Code launched here. And so it's booting up and getting the project container in here. And so if you're familiar with VS Code, it's going to be set up as normal as if um, you were using it locally on your computer as it has all of the same settings. And so just give it a moment to get fully set up. And here we go. If you're a developer, you already kind of know what project you're going to be working on. So in this case, I'm not going to show you exactly how I get F5 TTS um, working and all of the nitty gritty around that. But I'm going to show that you can do Git clone and all of that um, stuff similar to working locally. So let's do Git clone. And I copy that link from F5 TTS. So we are going to get that um, installed into our uh, local container here. All right. And so I will need to get some requirements, some pip installation done in order to actually run this repo. So you can actually manage all of your um, libraries inside of this requirements.txt. For example, the F5 TTS re uh, repo requires um, all of these dependencies right here. And so I could just copy and paste each one of these inside of requirements and go through that long list. I'm going to show what they recommend, how you install, um, let's say, packages inside of AI Workbench. And that's through using this packages area inside of the AI Workbench uh, graphical user interface. And so we are just going to go with that. And so 
if I navigate back into F5 TTS, we can actually use this as a pip package. And so we're just going to install this as a pip package. And so I'm just going to copy that, head over into AI Workbench, add that, I'm going to add the name of the package, and then I'm just going to specify pip. So I'm going to add that and then submit it. So it's going to start adding all the packages and building all the, the dependencies that we might need. And then we'll have to rebuild the container. And so just to summarize what we've done so far is we've built a base container from NVIDIA, integrated it with VS Code, and now we're installing some pip packages in order to run whatever code that we want to develop with. All right. And so once it's done installing that, uh, you can see that we have this as a pip package installed here. Um, we now just need to rebuild the container. So I'm just going to click on, um, well, Actually, I need to stop the environment first, and then I can rebuild the container. So I'm going to stop this, and then now we can go into here and then clear cache and build. So let's just wait for this to finish up already. So it's all done building. So that's going to give me all of the pip packages that I need for F5 TTS. Now, you don't have to do it that way. Um, you usually would just manage it inside the requirements. But since it is a pip package, um, I was able to just put it inside of there, inside of the environment. Um, add that F5 TTS as a package and it installed all of the dependencies needed. So now that we have this, um, we can go and just write a quick little test script to run inference with F5 TTS. All right, so here we have our short little test inference script. And then we do just need to upload a file, uh, which is the model itself. And I'm going to do that by just going into the file browser of the um, interface here add file and then uploading the model. So you'll see that it's present inside of the root directory here. And if I go into VS Code, you'll now see that it's in here. Um, I do just want to add one thing real quick just so that I don't end up pushing it. Um, I am just going to add a git ignore to all dot pt files um, inside of my git ignore so that I don't accidentally push uh, that file to uh, my GitHub. And we should be good to go. I think everything is is working here. So let's go and run this uh, Python file and uh, see what we get out of it. And it's good to go. So now we've got a result from this and we can listen to um, F5 TTS and um, let's see what we got. I don't really care what you call me. I've been a silent spectator watching species evolve, empires rise and fall. So cool. We just did some inference with F5 TTS, um, albeit I call this a little bit um, wonky just to have it as a demonstration. And so now what I'm going to do is um, commit this and publish this to GitHub so that I can install it on another computer. And I'll show that cycle or that process real quick. So let me just minimize that. And I can see that it says I've got seven commits to um, to commit and push. But if I click this, I'm going to get a um, issue. So I first need to publish it to my Git server. And so I'm going to publish it to GitHub at my namespace. And then I'm going to um, yeah, I'll just put this as as public so that anyone can see this so that you'll have access to this as well. And then I'm going to click on publish. So that's going to um, push it to my hub here. And then um, I should be able to now commit. I'm going to add commit, then I'm going to push to the Git server, create the commit and then. Um, all right. So, yeah, I was getting this error right here. And so um, I guess all I had to do was go into the VS code and just run a Git push here um, manually. So that is all good to go. So let me just get status to check what's going on and cool. So. Yeah, normally I should be able to do that here, but let's go and fetch what we have here. All right. And so we've got everything pushed on over into the hub here. And uh, this is uh, public to be able to use. So now all I have to do is just head over into a, another computer and uh, let's go ahead and try to run this. Alrighty. So now let's say that you have AI Workbench installed on another computer and you want to get that same repository up and going. Well, I'll first navigate to that repo and then um, copy the link that I'll need to do this. So copy your clipboard here. And then all I need to do is just go into NVIDIA Workbench, clone project, paste that into here and, and then clone it. 
and it will start building the container that is needed. So pretty seamless and I'll be able to get this up and going as well. So let's wait for this to finish building. So here we go. The build is all complete. And so now I can just click open in Visual Studio Code and it's going to uh, it's going to launch the project container. So see, I've got F5 TTS open. Let me just close that. But here is that project container. Um, that very same project container that was actually running on that laptop. And now all I need to do is just um, run this and we'll be good to go. Well, actually, first I got to install the Python extension. So let's do that real quick. Oop. And actually, there is one little issue here. So um, I didn't I forgot to do an additional push. So let me actually which is actually great for demonstration. So let me actually show that real quick. So let me just do a push on um, my laptop right here so all i did was just commit and then pushed and so now let's jump back into the uh, computer here and refresh that cool shows that i got that and so i can just fetch the repository here and then pull I'm gonna pull from the git server and there we go it's all up to date and now i've got all the correct modifications that i did on my laptop um, onto my other desktop so Let's run that Python debugger and then boom, there we go. We've got our results in the uh, the folder here and we've got the file. I don't really care what you call me. Cool. So we got all of that working and all of that cloned and I could start work on this desktop here and we would be all good to go. So so that was cool. I didn't have to do any um, virtual environment installation, any of that. I just pulled the container and it installed and it's compatible between my laptop desktop and then any type of remote location that I might have a server in um, I could also add that into here as well but that is a little bit more advanced and I won't be going into that um, as I don't have any Ubuntu servers to um, go off of and that's gonna be it all right and actually after I made the video Nvidia had some updates that they wanted to share so I just thought that I would go over them real quick in case any of them are important to um, to your guys's workflow so one of the big things is that they are enhancing how Git works inside of AI Workbench to make it simulate kind of more how uh, the standard Git would work on your computer or laptop. So they've added things like branching, merging, diffs, and finer grain controls for things like commits and Git ignores. So that's pretty cool. And then they've increased support for Docker Compose for um, I guess multi-container environments. Unfortunately, I'm not too familiar with Docker Compose, so I can't comment on that too much. And then allowing for sharing of like a prototype with a single use URL. And this is actually pretty cool. They demoed it to me where they could run an application on their computer. Sent They sent me over a URL. I was able to access that application, play around with it. And then after that, the session's over. I can see that being very useful if you want to share uh, maybe how an application works uh, real quick, a one off with somebody that uh, you're working with. And then just some user requested updates like dark mode for the desktop app and then improved installation on Windows. So um, early in the video, I said that there are some issues with uh, some of the installation and the ways around it. They're working on making those a little bit better. And so you may not run into those issues with the latest version of AI Workbench. And if you want to read in detail on what exactly they're expanding, you can Take a look down below here. So expanded Git support, kind of what I mentioned a little earlier, multi-container support with Docker Compose, and then the web application sharing through secure URLs. So there we go. Um, this link will also be down below in the description. So if you want to take a look at the blog post, um, you can check more on that as well. All right. So that is AI Workbench. This was sponsored by NVIDIA and Lenovo, though I do think AI Workbench is a pretty nice concept because you're able to containerize everything and just import all of that between um, different devices. So that I think is pretty cool. And I think that's going to be useful for a lot of enterprises out there um, that are working on uh, packages that they want to contain and work on. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I would like to say thank you to all the members of the channel for supporting me and very much appreciate it. So I'll see you guys later.